Hey, it's John at Tinderbox Arts, and this is a long-term review of the Michelin Road 6 GT tire. Now, when you go on motorcycle forums, uh, the threads about tires can really be a bore because there's no sense in arguing what is the best tire. There's no sense in arguing what is the best tire for a particular bike even because there are so many variables involved when you ride a motorcycle. The bike itself, the rider, uh, the style of riding, the roads you're on, there's just a million variables. So all that is kind of silly to argue about. However, I can give you an idea of how a tire will perform uh, given a bike and given a set of circumstances and that may or may not apply to you. So I'm certainly not saying this is the best or the worst tire or anything like that. I'm just trying to give you a sense of what the tire is like. Now I have these Road 6 GT tires mounted on my BMW R1200 RT. Uh, it's a 2012 model. Uh, I use this bike mostly for long pleasure trips, okay, across country, that sort of thing. So somewhat unique circumstances. I'm not commuting. I rarely use it on local roads, except maybe in the winter time when it gets real cold. I have another bike that I use for local roads. So these tires have currently about 10,000 miles on them. Most of that is comprised of two different trips. One was a 5,600 mile cross country trip and one I just got back from was a 3,400 mile trip into Canada. Both offered an extensive array of road surfaces and riding, um, and it really helped expose the strengths and weaknesses of this tire. To give you a general idea of the riding conditions that these tires have been through, on the 5,600 mile trip, uh, we went across country starting in New Jersey, went through the entire country here. This line isn't perfectly accurate, but it gives you a general idea. Uh, and went through uh, Colorado, Wyoming, ended up in Idaho and back. So there was a lot of highway riding. You look in Kansas, for example, I mean, I doubt we made more than four turns in that entire state. It was just straight highway, you know, straight ahead, no turns at all. But you look in Colorado, in Idaho, in Montana, there were areas where there's, you know, the Rocky Mountains and we're going through the mountains and through twisties and all sorts of conditions. Um, the road conditions varied quite widely by state. So some roads are in very good condition, some are in very bad condition. Uh, you know, we went through heavy rain in Idaho, for example. Uh, there was a day where it was 42 degrees Fahrenheit, raining heavily. Uh, and we were going through some heavy mountain twisties. So a very good test of the tires as far as um, wet roads uh, and temperature as well. There were other areas, uh, I believe it was, boy, so I've, I've forgotten, it might have been uh, Illinois or Indiana or in that area, it was 102 degrees Fahrenheit uh, on highway, extremely hot. So we really just had extremes on that trip uh, and it was really a good test of the tire. On our most recent 3,400 mile trip, we started again in New Jersey, worked our way up through New York State, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, and then crossed into Canada, where we did Nova Scotia and the famous Cape Breton Highlands National Park, came around, went through New Brunswick, went into Quebec, and worked our way back down, and then back down through the States. On this trip, it was a lot of rain, a lot of very heavy fog, um, the road conditions were quite poor in many of the rural areas that we went to. Many times we ended up on dirt roads or roads with very heavy gravel and sand on them. So again, a very good test of the tire. So here's the rear tire after 10,000 miles of riding and there's still some life in it. I wouldn't take this on a trip, but I might use it locally for a little bit longer. You can see there's a flat spot right here. I hope you can see anyway. And that's from a lot of the highway riding. That's to be, to be expected. If you look at the new tire here, you know, it's much more rounded. Now there are dual compounds in this tire to help prevent uh, this flat area. So this center section here is a little bit harder rubber than the edges. Nonetheless, you know, it's to be expected uh, after this many miles that you're probably going to get a flat spot with a lot of highway riding. The front tire, by contrast, really looks pretty good. Um, the, the profile remains rounded. Here's the new one. Here's the 10,000 mile version. And, you know, it's really not that different. Uh, it is worn down, of course, but not that different. Now, when I'm traveling, I have quite a bit of weight on the bike. All of the luggage is filled, so I have the side boxes filled and I have the top box filled. Uh, mostly with riding gear and that kind of thing so I have easy access and then I carry a bag or two bags up top here with my own clothing and 
quite frankly, I have to bring food with me because we're going with very rural areas that we're riding in, and very often there isn't anywhere to eat. So we bring some food with us so we don't starve to death. Because of all that weight, I definitely choose the GT version of this tire. So there is a Road 6 without the GT, and that is designed for lighter weight bikes, and the GT is designed for heavier weight bikes, maybe with your carrying a passenger or carrying luggage and that sort of thing. Can you use a Road 6 without the GT on an RT bike? Yeah, probably. Uh, but if you're going to be traveling with a lot of weight, you know, you're really better off with a GT. Now, that brings up kind of my first point here, which is that the GT is not an easy tire to mount uh, because the sidewall is a little stiffer. Um, you know, you're going to struggle a little bit to get this on and off the rim. It's not awful. Uh, if you use enough lube and everything, it, it goes on fairly easily. But it's going to be more of a struggle than a standard tire. Now, the mileage you can expect from these tires, you know, I would say in most cases, you probably are going to get 10,000 miles, potentially more. So as far as the road surfaces dry, this tire remains composed pretty much no matter what the surface is. So I was riding with my son who has a Triumph Tiger 800. He had a different set of tires mounted on his, more knobby, uh, you know, off-road oriented. And we could compare. And on dirt roads, which I did find myself on with these tires, um, they still remain composed. Obviously, they're not going to provide the same kind of traction that a knobby tire is going to provide, but they, they, were, they held up pretty good. I really couldn't complain. We had other instances where there was brand new road surface, and when I say brand new, I mean it was still steaming, and the steamroller was still putting the stuff down. We still had to ride on it. These remain composed. Um, really, no matter what the road surface, brand new, dirt, and something in between, they remain composed when the road is dry. Now in raining conditions or wet road surface conditions, that's where this tire really shines and that's what their advertising pushes as well. And it's true, I have never had any problems with this and I've been through some real deluges as far as rain, I mean just bucketing rain uh, so, and water just washing over the road surface. I've never had a problem. Uh, the tread pattern here really helps you know, push that water away from the tire. I've never lost traction. Uh, my son, who was riding a different a tire, a more of a knobby tire, he was reporting uh, on this last trip quite a bit of traction loss in corners and curves and such, and I remain composed no matter what. So as far as uh, performance in water, rain, you know, wet road surfaces, I don't think you're going to get anything better than this tire. Now having said that, there is potentially one downside to that excellent performance in, in uh, wet roads and rain and that sort of thing. And that's this tread pattern. I have noticed as these tires age, they do tend to be a little noisy, especially on the RT anyway, the front tire. It, it happened around, I want to say 4,000 miles in, maybe 4,500 miles in. And what I noticed was it's just a slight whistling sound. Um, it, it's kind of like a truck tire uh, on a highway. It's, it's kind of that sort of sound. And you notice it more when you're leaning so you'll be going down straight, and then if you lean a little bit, you just get a little bit of a whistling sound. It's not terribly objectionable, but it may take you by surprise, and it might be louder than some other tires. If that bothers you, you should think twice about this tire, because I think probably all of them are going to do that uh, once they get to a certain age. It hasn't really bothered me. Um, you know, this RT is kind of noisy anyway. The transmission tends to be clunky, and, you know, it's not the quietest bike in the world. Uh, so it doesn't really bother me. But, you know, if it does bother you, that's something to think about. Now, as far as the durability of this tire, uh, I think it's pretty good. Now, the mileage, we already talked about uh, 10,000 miles is, is what you're looking at here. But when I say durability, I also mean a lot of times I'll be on the road and you'll end up with very deep potholes that you don't see and you end up, you know, banging through or ruts in the road that you can't avoid. You know, it happens. And on this last trip, I did find quite a bit of that. And yet there's no damage to the tire at all. There's no chunks out of it. Uh, you know, the tread is held up well. Uh, there's no missing pieces on the edge of the tread. It's all held up very, very well. Um, in fact, there were a couple hits that I took this time that I was a little bit worried about the rim, but, you know, the tire took the hit and it really wasn't a problem. So durability, I think, at least with the GT model, is very, very good. Now, as I already mentioned, mounting these can be a little bit of a struggle because of the stiffer sidewall. However, the bead here seals very well. I've never had any leakage 
And on this last trip, and even the previous trip, I never put air in the tires at all. Um, it just held beautifully. So that is a plus, I think, especially on a long trip where you don't really want to be taking out uh, an air pump every two minutes. So this, this held up very well as far as that. So let me see if I can start to bottom line this for you. You can already see that I bought another pair of these Road 6 GTs. So this will be my second pair. And I wouldn't have spent that money if I didn't believe in this tire. Now these are not an inexpensive tire compared to some other brands that are of similar style. Uh, you know, that you're going to pay a little bit of a premium. Is that premium worth it? Mm, it may or may not be. For me, I'm on these long trips, I'm very far from home, and I would really just rather not have any issues with my tires. And for me, the wet road condition, the raining and, and, and things like that, is a very big part of these trips that I do. So it's worth paying a little bit of a premium to make sure that I get the wet road performance that I have been getting out of this tire. If you're just doing local roads or local commuting or something like that, it might not be worth the premium price. Uh, that would really depend on your circumstances. So overall, I think this tire is a durable tire, has excellent wet road performance, and I doubt you can get anything better than that. Because it does come in that GT model, uh, it is appropriate for a bike that is heavier to start with or a bike that you have a passenger or a lot of luggage on. So I like that feature. So the downsides of this tire, I can think of three. One is the noise. At 4,000 or 4,500 miles in that range, I started to experience a little bit of noise, especially when turned on the side profile. It doesn't really bother me once I understood what was going on. Uh, but if that does bother you, that could be a downside. The second thing could be a plus or a minus really it's a gt version of this tire so it's got the stiffer sidewall so the downside is it's more difficult to mount it on the wheel the upside is it can carry more weight uh, and be more durable so you know it's kind of both ways there and the third thing is that it's fairly expensive you will pay a premium over some other brands i think uh, that are similar. Is that worth it to you? Well, I think it really depends on what kind of riding you're doing. If you're just doing local roads and commuting, it may not be worth it. If you're doing long trips like I do, and you're very far from home and you don't need any problems, it may be worth that premium. The upsides of the tires certainly are the durability and the mileage that you'll get out of them. Uh, given the kind of roads that I've been on, I don't think 10,000 miles is bad at all. And like I said, I think I can get a little bit more into that locally. I wouldn't take a wouldn't take that out on a trip now, but locally I might get some more life out of it. And the rain performance, wet road performance, excellent. I, I just don't think you could get any better. It has never given me a problem, uh, no matter what I've tried to do. And I've come in, you know, too hot on some curves on wet roads where I'm not familiar with the road and things like that, where I really had to dive in. I've never had a problem. They've always held up well. So you can see I bought another pair myself. I do believe in this tire. But those are the pluses and minuses as I see it after 10,000 miles of use.